one of 18 players to hit four home runs in a game. And uh, the other, of course, J.D. Martinez, who did it yesterday. We're very pleased to be joined by uh, Sean Green. Sean, I got it. I, thanks for joining us. And I got to tell you, I made this point to Kevin Barker earlier. I was really surprised when I found out that there are more perfect games than there have been four home run games in baseball. Because I just assume that, you know, we've gone through, uh, we went through a bunch of eras in baseball. We had the steroid era. I mean, we've had, you know, and now the home run is kind of the, it's, it's come back. I just thought there'd be more of them to be honest. And I'm not saying it's it's easy to hit a four-homer game, but does it surprise you, given the way the game is and the way the game's been, that it doesn't happen more often? No, I think uh, I think the reason it doesn't happen that often is because oftentimes when someone's already hit three, I, the, the score gets out of hand. Or um, in one of the rare cases when Carlos Delgado did it, I think the Blue Jays either kind of lost or it was a really close game. Mm-hmm. Um so in that case, you would expect him to be, you know, to get walked in the, in that, you know, the latter innings. But I think that's really the, the biggest reason why it doesn't happen very often is, is just the game tends to be out of control when a guy's already hit three. Yeah, when you hit your, we'll say you hit your second one after your second one. When you went up to the plate for your third at bat after your second home run, were you trying to hit a home run? I mean, I was pretty much. I was pretty much trying to hit a home run every time I went up to bat. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all honesty, like I, my approach, I, once I kind of figured out how to start driving the ball to center field and, and the opposite field, I really did. Like I, I, I practiced with Carlos and BP just trying to – we had a home run derby every, every day to center field. And that's why I learned how to start hitting home runs. And so we practiced it, and then in the, when the game you know, came around, we were – you know, in that mode of just trying to get a pitch. And if you get a pitch, then you're swinging hard and trying to hit it. I was trying to hit as hard as I could in the air. It's basically what I was trying to do to center field. And that was my approach pretty much all the time. And, you know, you have situations with two strikes or when you're trying to get a guy over from second to third with no outs, things like that, where you're changing the approach or certain pitchers would change the approach. But for the most part, I was trying to hit the ball. You know, t- the people talk about launch, launch angle today. Like, that's really what we were trying to do without a defined term for it. Yeah, you know, you, you just mentioned something, trying to hit the ball up the middle the other way. That's a lost art. People just don't try and do that anymore. And when Jeff asked you about hitting the f- four home runs, is that a big surprise to you? The more you think about that and guys, not the inability to go the other way. Like J.D. Martinez has, has 16 of his home runs this year. The other way. The art of going the other way or the ability to go the other way hinders a lot of people, right? It does. I think it's for me, that's that was my big advantage. Is I early on in my career, I always wanted to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Like that was kind of like John Olerud. Like that was my swing. And then I started to figure out how to drive the ball that way, and that was a huge, huge advantage because when you're starting to hit more home runs, the pitchers are scared to come into you because most people are hitting their home runs to, to you know, the pull side, so they stay down in the way, and that became the pitch that I wanted to drive over the left center. So it was a, it was a huge advantage, but. Yeah, if you're hitting the ball the other way, you're you're staying on the ball longer. You're able to adjust to uh, different, you know, off speed pitches and breaking balls and all that stuff. So it's it's really it was the approach in the mid '90s of a lot of guys, great hitters like you know Edgar and Manny Ramirez and A Rod and um, Frank Thomas. All these guys were, were big into the that you know right center um, approach for right hand hitters, and I think that's something that that got lost for a while that's why one of the reasons why the hitting you know dipped for for a generation sean what goes through your mind when you see somebody else hit four home runs like jd martinez i mean it's always it's cool it's happened i guess since i did in 02 i think i was 14 so there's been four more Mm -hmm. um and you know it's it's a pretty neat thing it's you know all the stars have to be lined up perfectly there's a lot of players that have the ability to do it. I mean, if you could hit a handful of home runs in a season, you obviously have the power to, to hit the ball to the fence. Um, like even Scooter, who did it earlier this year, is not known for being a big home run hitter, and he's able to do it. So it, it's just it's it's kind of an interesting um, situation every time it happens because you wonder, okay, what what led to that? You know, how did the game unfold to the point where it just worked out where a guy can, can do that? Yeah. Do you like the way baseball's headed? You know, the, the shift has changed – every approach that any power hitter, any guy walking to the plate thinks about. They think about now not hitting the ball on the ground. 
you get the ball on the ground, you're basically out because of the way the shift is playing. Do you like that part of baseball, the way that's headed or the way it is now? Uh, you know, I, I think they, I, I was never a huge fan of all the sabermetrics and, yeah. and over, over analytics. Um, I think most players um, don't love that, but um, I, it's funny because when I was coming up, everyone was like, hit the ball on the ground. If you hit yeah. the ball in the air, you're out. Yeah. So it's the complete, complete opposite. And, and that was really more my approach early in my career. And then when I start figuring out how to you know, hit the ball with that right launch angle and get backspin, um, that's when I really learned how to hit. So it, I, I believe it is right. Even if a guy is not a power guy, it's really, it's really the same swing. You just might not have, it might not be as aggressive. You might not be as strong or big or whatever the reason, but it's really, it's the same swing that a guy like Ichiro takes, um, that a power hitter takes in the same slot, um, but each row just doesn't quite. He just kind of lets it be that line drive over short, as opposed to really trying to to, to put a little extra on it and, and hit it, you know, a little further. Mm. Hey, uh, you know, Sean, and taking a look at the Dodgers, and and I know it's a team that you're, you know, you're 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 still still relatively close to. You still pay a certain amount of attention to the Dodgers. Um, what do you read into this recent uh, this recent run from them? Do you read anything into it, or is this just kind of one of those things that happens to a team, and better to have it happen around September fifth than October fifth? Yeah, I mean it's a really interesting turn of events, right? I, I I mean they were the first month was was very mediocre at best, and then four of the best months in the history of baseball, and then now you know really really struggling, and I think in some ways. As long as they can turn around sooner than later, now where it doesn't become doesn't be become turn from a you know a, a cut to an inf- an infection right. is really that's, that's that's a scary thing. You don't want to at this point they want to start October completely healthy and have guys feeling good, feeling confident, um, both individually as hitters and pitchers, but also as a team. Um, but at the same time, you're going to have a blip, and I, I think it's. I think it's better that they're not chasing as much that that under 16 win season because that's a distraction that could prevent them from having guys be in the best possible mindset and physical you know place come October. So I think that's a good thing. It, it just needs to stop. It really needs to stop now. And even if they finish the season, you know, playing you know 500 baseball or a little better than 500 baseball, I think it'll be you know a good place for them to start October. 